Hi Aquarius, it's Elle here to do your weekly reading. This will go from December 8th through the 14th, 2019. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the comments, the subscriptions to the channel. It means a lot. Please continue to do so. Uh, all links are below if you want to get your own personal reading. I'm taking the liberty of pulling a few cards for us. Let's go ahead and get into this. Okay, so how Aquarius comes in excuse me, comes into the week. The tower. Nice. Alright, the advice for Aquarius. Two cards fell out for you. Ten of fire. And the six of earth. It's good energy. Okay, and how you end the week is the ten of water. Very nice. And so... This week could be about the dynamic in relationships. Someone could be, so you're dealing with something that you've dealt with before. And this could be definitely someone from the past. This could uh, be you having a new start and then it there arises situation. Um, so an example Aquarius could get a new home new car, new job, new something something you know pretty something tangible or something that could be you know a, a, a very good new start for the Aquarius right uh, and then you start to see the some historical outbursts, uh, display of maybe even jealousy or 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 backbiting or talking behind your back or whatever it may be, you start to see that come from either friends or family or someone that you you've known for a significant amount of time, someone who you have history with. Somebody sees you walking in your purpose and they're very they're not they're not happy about this at all. So some some problem, some challenge arises in a relationship or a project that you are partaking in and it has historical measure. Like you've been here before with this person or with the or you've been here before with a different person. Something good happens to you and Spite, envy, jealousy rears rears its ugly head, and you have to deal with it. Um, for some of you, maybe you're not looking at the root cause of that, like or just the you're not looking at the situation for what it is. Uh, if nobody's talking about you, then you're not doing something significant. You know, they talked about the greats. You know, everybody knows the saying they. They spoke ill of of, of Jesus Christ. Um, they spoke ill of all, you know all people who brought positivity and light to situations. So what? Why do you expect that you would be treated differently? You also have to understand that everyone is not happy for you in certain relationships, business partnerships. Um, even in even in a marriage and how it's going to come out it could come out all of a sudden someone could just blow up and so and now it's for you guys to rebuild maybe you'll get to the to the bottom of why someone or you don't like someone or they don't like you could be a Scorpio person it doesn't have to be but this is very calculated energy maybe even vengeful you may have something to do with the fact of why this person doesn't look at you favorable, favorably. I don't know. Whatever happens here, it, the advice here, it, it allows you to put the past down, to put this stressful situation down. Someone may even tell you something or a secret may get released uh, and, it, and it releases burden. You no longer have to carry it. Um... 
it puts you in a position of being on an equal level playing field with someone. It may even open up the opportunity for money to flow. I think you finally, for some of you finally get the fact that, okay, whatever it is you're doing, you may be on your life path or on your way to life path and people aren't happy with it, but you get to a place of understanding that um, this is what you're supposed to be doing. You'd release the burden of trying to hide, oh, of playing hide and hide and go seek. I don't know why that it came up to me, but or, or or trying to reserve yourself. You kind of fully walk into your power. You also may even walk into some unexpected opportunities and or money. Um, you just find balance and and resonance in the fact that this is for you. There may even be in a relationship, a second relationship or marriage or some sort, there may be problems that you have to talk about. These are money issues. Um, somebody was skirting over and skating over the real issues, but now it looks like you, you can't do that anymore. But that's a good thing because it takes you to, at the end of the week, or the outcome is a tin of water material and emotional happiness being fulfilled the highest level of happiness you got to the bottom of a situation some of you this was your prayer some of you this is you just really accepting that this path is for you you can't worry about what others will say what they won't say you were at a crossroads the opposition was well do i know enough what will others say other people think that I don't have a position in this or I shouldn't have an opinion in this. You were too concerned or are too concerned with the other and not concerned with where spirit is trying to usher you into. So they want you to deal with these. This is um, situations of confidence or lack thereof. They want you to deal with the fact that maybe you should not be reserving yourself, hiding yourself any longer, that you're going to have to come out of your comfort zone to see the fruition of or to see uh, e even more increased opportunity here to get the gift you have the gift use the gift uh, so that's for some of you um, if we're going to talk about relationship maybe something gets re revealed in a relationship somebody tells you that they were having problems in their relationship <laughs> why did I start laughing just like this bo this Buddha I started laughing because <laughs> someone tells you or you find out that somebody is having problems in their relationship, in their marriage or whatever that may be, um, and you do just that. You do just like he's doing. You sit with your legs crossed and you laugh your ass off, either on the outside or the inside because it's almost as if it's a bittersweet or a sweet vindication that you were not crazy that you knew uh, i mean you know you really had no doings in this it wasn't as if you you caused the issue you caused the problem but you maybe you have foresight in knowing that this situation with this person was going to turn out exactly how it did and now you're just laughing you are maybe even having the last laugh uh that doesn't extract from the fact that maybe you might even help this person by way of spoken word or whatever you can do to help them come out of a, a turbulent situation uh, but not before you start laughing e either in their face or behind their back whatever but uh, this is a situation where maybe someone is telling you this uh, and it's making you joyous and they may even be telling you that you are their joy the whole lot of it makes you just laugh it's just funny at this point uh and what's to come of that is what's to come of that let's see what the shells have to this person may be at the crossroad this is good advice too you may even be the person that says well you know you may give them good advice um uh, let's see wow yep i miss you didn't i tell you this like somebody's coming and you know this they're coming in like a windstorm 
they're tearing down old foundations they may be releasing or relinquishing um, the past and telling you something about a relationship once again it's funny it's funny how the table turn. They make beauty. They may be telling you how beautiful you are inside and out. Wow, marriage. They may be telling you that there's something going on with their marriage or that they want to marry you or that they married the wrong person. This is a dynamic of all I can keep on hearing is this shit is funny. I don't curse, you know, that much. Not to say that I'm a saint or something, but all I keep, that's all I keep hearing. So if you know that offends you you know my apologies but i just keep hearing this shit is funny this shit is like somebody is so so rattled and shaken we're gonna go over it so what i was not gonna do this week was extend any of the reading the readings because um the the purchases weren't where they needed to be so i said you know well maybe they don't need it but anyway um, we're going to extend this reading. This is very, very funny. Wow, I miss you. Beauty, marriage. We'll go over to the website and see what this is about, Aquarius, and see who is this person saying, I miss you. You're their joy. You're their happiness. Um, see if you're even for, you're up for the taking or ask the cards, should you even be up for the taking? Thank you, Aquarius, for being here. There's another segment to this reading. Please stay tuned for that segment. If you purchase the extended reading, look at both segments. It, 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 this is uh, the next segment is real world advice that you can use. It's coupled with the tarot. Um, stay tuned for that, Aquarius. This shit is funny. I don't know. I might even name the video that. I don't know. Funny, funny, funny. I like it, and I keep hearing, I don't know if anyone is familiar, most people are, uh, Lauren Hill. It's funny how situations, something, something, there, there's a lyric she says, but it, it just keeps playing over in my head. Um, I think it's from that, it's song doo-wop or that thing or something like that, but um, it might be from that song, I don't know, but it's, she, she says, I, I might try to link it below. So you can get more, um, more of a message from that. But it's like, it's funny how, you know what? So the lyric is, Lauren Hill's lyric is, it's funny how money changes situations. Wow. And look at that in the middle, that six of pentacles. Maybe your person is in some codependent, uh, excessive situation where maybe they're the giver. And there's a taker or maybe they see you on top of the world and now they want you back Aquarius funny so that lyric is it's funny how money changes situations and all I, that's all I keep hearing and then I keep hearing this shit is funny very very interesting Aquarius we're gonna go over to the website and, and drill down on this to see what we can see what spirit wants us to know because sometimes spirit doesn't show us everything. They just want us to go through it, right? So don't be mad at me. Don't be mad at spirit. Just go through it. Just keep living, all right? As I used to say, just keep waking up. That's all you really want to do, right? Just keep waking up. Once you stop waking up, then, yeah, you know what it is. All right, so stay tuned for the next segment. Thank you, Aquarius. Happy holidays. All links are below. Take advantage of these personal readings, the gift cards, gift, the gift of clarity this holiday season thank you guys take care guys hello everyone so today on l's real corner all right so today we're going to talk about emotionally unavailable men you can pertain this to women too but the demographics of my channel are is more women watching uh, the videos uh subscribing to the channel than men so i apologize if you're a man and you like women or same sex just apply it to your life, right? Okay. All right, so emotionally unavailable men, women, cat, dog, whatever, are basically non-committal, okay? Th these are non-committal people. These are people who are not able to make any 
lasting commitment with you, uh, with anything or with anybody. It, it, it might spill over into every facet of their life. We're talking about more so relationships, romantic relationships. Um, so that's, that's what we have here. Not, they may be non-committal because they're still dating other people. They could be married, uh, in love with another, or there could be significant emotional trauma that just doesn't allow them to commit, um, and which hence they are emotional, emotionally unavailable. So when we look at, when we dissect this, this term here, we kind of look at it from an aerial view and we say emotionally unavailable. The mind wants to rationalize that, that statement in regards to the person that we like or love and say that, no, 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 that they're not emotionally unavailable because, you know, they tell me how much they like me, they compliment me, they touch me, we have sex, blah, blah, blah. So you rationalize and you say, they're not emotionally unavailable. They are whatever you want to deem them in, as. But emotionally unavailable, what should be inserted into that statement is this person is unavailable to invest emotionally with you. See, an investment is it's a relationship. It's I put in and then I'm going to receive out. It is, um, it is equal in a sense, suppo supposedly, you know. Um, it is a relationship. It, it could be if, an if-then relationship. If I do this, then I'll get this. This type of person, the emotionally unavailable person, is not investing in anything. They're surface dwellers. So when you say, no, my guy's not emotionally unavailable because he compliments me. Well, let's see what emotionally unavailable men or women are. They're complimentary. They're seductive. You know, so if you're trying to rationalize that your person isn't emotionally unavailable because they tell you how nice you look, well, that is a key factor of an unavailable uh, it emotionally unavailable person it is to dwell on the surface we're not going deep about anything okay because they are void of they, they, they just don't have the capacity for whatever reason we've got some reasons here it could be more uh to invest emotionally Okay, so you get an emotional response from them, but it's not a real investment to tell me that I look nice in my dress or I have a nice body or uh, you like the way I we had sex when I did this move or that move. That's complimentary. They, they are that. They will compliment you. They will um, put themselves on the line for, you know, for those purposes. So let's look at what emotionally unavailable men or women people are. Evasive seductive, complimentary, rigid, and routine. Key point right here. Rigid in their routine. They will not allow you or pretty much anyone, but definitely you, because we're only talking about you and this other person, right? They will not allow you to dictate, uh, interfere with, mess up a routine. So if they tell you that we're meeting on Monday at 6 p.m. at this place and you say well no i you know monday isn't good for me let's do tuesday um maybe at the same place uh 7 p.m no this is what i want i want it here now that time if you can't do it then okay i'm okay with not seeing you i'm okay with us not getting together but it has to be on my turn my terms, my routine, and their routine about that. You know, they see you on these days. Maybe because on the other days they are either dating, married, in love with another, or there's significant there's some significant emotional trauma. So when they do get close to people, they back away. So they only want to, you know, they they have a routine for how they deal with people. 
they're always in control. They always want to be in control. To be out of control of a situation where they're not investing in it emotionally would would deem it as would deem this situation as one that they are willing to invest in, willing to do the give and take, willing to allow you to take the ring sometime. No, they're not into that. There's no um, investment here. They're unavailable completely. Okay, so this is the definition of the emotionally unavailable person, right? So right now, right now, you need to determine if you're dealing with an emotionally unavailable person or if you are that emotionally unavailable person. So my question to those who say, yes, I'm dealing with the emotionally unavailable man or woman, uh, you have to determine right now, right now, what is your end game here? What do you want from this situation? What is the end game? A lot of you, we talked about this last time, the end game. You just go through relationships. Some of you even going through life, no real end game. What's the end game? Okay. Uh, what would make you content in this relationship? Yeah. Uh, contentment. Yeah. And this day and age we have been fed that contentment is a bad thing it is a bad word you should never be content you should always be striving for more and more and more better 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 but contentment is not bad if it's within your reason and if you have defined it completely and utterly and you only define that once you figure out who the hell you are what you want and then you can start to ask the answer some of these questions like what is my end game right okay so anyway moving right along you say um i say what is your end game most of you are going to say it's commitment you want this person this non-committal person to commit okay so you're asking for something um you're asking for this person to give you something that they're not open to giving or maybe they don't even know how to give right so you're trying to get water from the rock okay Granted, it can happen. It can happen. But I do want you to know that this is not this is not a situation, an emotionally unavailable person. This is not a situation that happens overnight. It's not a situation that, that doesn't happen without drama, without the breakups to makeups. Just it's not a situation that you just say, okay, I want commitment. And you tell the person and they say, great, I've been non-committal all this time. And you've come along and asked me for a commitment and now I want commitment. No, it doesn't work like that. Okay. Um, especially if you're dealing with a married individual or someone who is in love with another. How will you know these things, right? If they're still dating other women, there's emotional trauma, married or in love with another person learn your person ask questions ask b here's the tarot for you the page of swords be inquisitive be curious be asking the questions spy within reason if they have social media look at the social media if there's a mutual friend ask Sur surface level questions to gain knowledge about your person learn your person this is if you want commitment learn this person so you know what you're dealing with you know who you're dealing with the most i say this every single time or i ask a question every time i i do a reading a personal reading the the other person, the quarant, wants to know, well, how does this person do this? And how do they feel about this? And blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, have you even talked to this person? Have you asked any questions? You have to ask. Okay, so you say, well, I'm not going to get the truth. Sometimes asking the question is not about getting the truth. Expecting, uh... The asking is not in the, you know, in the expecting. You're going to get whatever you're going to get, right? 
but you can always draw back on when you have the conversation, when you ask the question. If you say, L, um, how long have you been on YouTube, right? You're expecting the truth from me, but let's say I lied. You say, oh, yeah, I've been on YouTube, doing YouTube videos for seven years. Well, we know that that is not the truth. You, we both go on about our lives. You find out that I've only been doing YouTube videos for two years, uh, well, three years. And then you say, you come back to me, you say, well, I, I asked you the question. How long had you been doing YouTube videos? See, you hold a person accountable for their words. You've heard the term, uh, you know, my word is my bond or words are our bond. You can, it's surety. It's like a surety bond. If I ask you, if you are single and you're married and I find out that later down the line, then I have, you have to be held accountable. That person, you don't give that person an out. Because now when you find out, you you say, you said you were single. I found out you were married. They'll say, they can't say, well, you never asked. You say, no, we had this conversation. I asked the question. You lied. So that makes you a married liar. I'm done. But anyway, moving right along, you want to be asking questions. You want to be the page of swords. Learn your person. If you want commitment from a non-committal person, you have to know what they're dealing with within themselves. You have to know what they're dealing with within their own life. Okay? So you you start you become the page of swords and you start asking the questions an emotionally unavailable person man or woman man or woman will probably most likely elude or or move toward toward evasiveness you start asking questions it's no more surface level you're trying to go deep you know um you may say, well, I only see you on Wednesday and Friday. What are you doing, you know, the other days of the week? Or I know you see you work, blah, blah, blah. But um, maybe we can get together on one of those other days. If they start to be evasive, then you know, what is that? That says emotionally unavailable men, but women too. Anyone, it, they are what well, evasive. So you know that you're dealing with that. You know that this is the seven of swords. When people start to be evasive, seven of swords, there is more to the story. They're giving you, now this is when they start to either play mental games, they give you just a little bit, or they just completely change the subject. They go back to being either seductive or complimenting you um, in some fashion. They go back to, sur to being surface dwellers. So you know that, okay, I'm dealing with a highly unavail you know emotionally unavailable person all right because they become the seven of swords now at this point you can deal with this shit i wouldn't um if you want to continue to deal with this state your claim be the ace of swords stating your claim is I feel like our relationship needs to go to another level. I feel like I don't know you at times. I would like to get to know you, to know you outside of the bedroom, outside of doing something like going to dinner or um, drinks. I just, I want to really spend more time with you, around you, because I would like to get to know you, all right? They're probably going to run back to evasiveness or or you're messing with the rigid, the rigidness of their routine, right? So, um, in stating your claim, you say, I would like to get to know you. And if that is not an option, then, you know, we might need to be, this is when you start to create boundaries with this person, this emotionally unavailable person. Um, you start to create those boundaries. You say, if I can't get to know you on a different, deeper level, 
then we need to probably, you know, see each other less or maybe you or I need to get to a better place where we're wanting the same thing. You put the ball into their court. You create that boundary, which is the seven of wands. Okay? Create the boundaries. Blockage now. You, they can't get to you with all of this doing, all of this surface dwelling, being seductive, complimenting you, uh, you know, showing you a good time. They can't do that. You've created the boundary. You're the seven of wands. You stated your claim, and now you're creating the boundaries. Now, after you create the boundaries, you're going to have to wait for results. If this surface dweller or this emotionally unavailable person really comes into their own and really digs deep and says, you know what, I really like this person. Maybe I should treat them a little better. Maybe I should open up a little more. They'll come around, right? Or maybe they won't. You need to be at this point waiting for results. The seven of pentacles. The seven of pentacles is someone who there's a temporary pause. Okay. Um, but, but do understand that good news and, and good tidings, this turning in your favor, um, whether it's the fact that you may have to walk away permanently or that this person comes back around, it's still all good either way, because I'll tell you why, but let's go back to Seven of Pentacles. Waiting for results. You're the Seven of Pentacles. You're not being pushy. There might not even be a lot of communication. You're just you're just waiting, and you're waiting for the return on your investment. You invested. You are emotionally available. This person isn't. You've stated your claim. You've created the boundaries, and now you're waiting for results. And if you do not get the result that you want, Maybe this person never comes back around or they come back around to being emotionally unavailable. They they still come back around being evasive, seductive, you know, the same old thing that you might need to. Uh, this is why the I put the world here. You Now you need to go into the next chapter. You need to learn the freaking lesson. The world is about achievement, learning the lesson, going to the next chapter, moving on from situation, okay? You, some of you may need to walk away permanently. It's not going to turn in your favor, especially if you want commitment. Determine what you want. What is your end game here? If you just want to hang out with the person, you like having sex, you like having escapades, you like all of that stuff, then continue. Scratch all of this. Just know what you're dealing with, right? If you want more, you're going to have to walk away permanently if this person is just not ready to give you what you want. That is easier said than done, but it can be done. That is the that is hence that's the operative word. It can be done. You're going to have to turn into the world. Learn the lesson, walk away. A person can institute these types this type of behavior when they've completely accepted themselves and they've come into their own and there's no trauma um, there's no emotional trauma that they're dealing with. When you're hurt, you find another hurt person and you deal with this karmic situation. But when you are whole, you're, you're healed, you, you see the lesson in this and you're, and you can walk away, be able to walk away. Um, emotionally, um, stable, balanced people who have gone through, who have learned the lesson, are able to walk away. Uh, we're at 19 minutes. Shit. So you need to be able to, to walk away. Um, if you if the result is this person is coming back and being the same. And some of you, you'll get a turnaround. You'll get the person coming back and um, giving you exactly what you want. Still, the world. Now you're going to the next chapter. Because you now know how to deal with, with situations you can readily identify. Also, with me writing the tarot, um, the significance of the tarot in here is, of course, this is a tarot channel, is to bring in the tarot. But it's also, uh, if some of you have tarot decks at home and you pull cards for yourself in regards to situations, relationship, or business or family or career, whatever, you know, if, if you pull a card, 
and you ask the cards, how should I be or what should I do um, in regards to dealing with this guy? And you pull the page of swords, then you know you need to ask questions. You need to be more inquisitive. You need to be more cu curious. You need to be willing to learn. Learn this person. You don't know them. You do need to do the investigative work. The Page of Swords is the investigator because eventually he's going to turn into the scientist, the King of Swords. So anyway, but you got to do the work of learning them, right? So we have all these sevens here, seven of wands, seven of pentacles, and the seven of swords. The seven talks about marriage, relationships, um, um, business, business partnerships. It talks about sharing it talks about interpersonal uh, dynamic or connection, how this person comes off. So if you're pulling a seven of swords for your person, then you know there's more to the story. They're giving you a bit and not the whole. So anyway, I hope that this was informative to you. Um, thank you for being here. Continue. Share this. This is relatable information for for anybody um share this video okay thank you guys take care guys